Maribyrn traffic, try 6340 taxis via Charlie for runway 12. Maribyrn. Alright, good day everyone. So we've just seen how to do the um, checklist, we've modified it, everything's good. So now we're going to go for a fly. Today we've got our um, wife in the back. We're going to ask her a couple of questions. She doesn't know about this yet. Say hi Rayleigh. Hello. Maribyrn traffic, track 6340, enters back tracks 1012 for a uh, local flight. Maribyrn traffic. Maribyrn traffic, track 6340, lines up, rolls runway 12, Maribyrn, local flight, Maribyrn. Okay, good. There's a bird on your right there. Good to go, on yeah. my right. Yeah, just Where? there, straight ahead. At one o'clock position, oh, yeah. over the runway. Alright, so we're rev on from Maryborough and we're tracking out to Lenthal's Dam. Uh, we've had a bit of a dry spell for a while now and I just thought I'd go and check the water levels just to see what it was like. And as I said before in the introduction, I've got my wife with me today. And I just want to know, Raylene, we've got, uh, we've had a bit of time, haven't we, since we've last flown together? Yeah, it has been a few months. And why would that be? Because we have been very busy, moving house. Well, you haven't been, um, well I haven't been <laughs> able to fly, but when I've been able to fly, you haven't been available. <laughs> and it's been too early in the morning. Too early in the morning, well when the weather's good, smooth conditions. I've been working. Or well, working. So we're in, we've come up now in the uh, mid to late, probably call it the later afternoon. The time is now around about 4pm. Zulu time, yeah, four, actually it's 4.43. So it's the, the uh, weather conditions are settling down, there's still a bit of thermal activity. The sun's still quite high, and you'd probably think that, well, we just went out for lunch, didn't we? We did. And it was quite warm when we came out of the air conditioning, wasn't it? It was very warm. So you would think it was quite thermal and bumpy at the moment, wouldn't yes. you? Yes. And Absolutely. is it? No. What's it like? It's actually very pleasant. It's pleasant? It's very pleasant. The air temperature is nice. It is. In fact, it's probably getting a bit cool. But it's okay, we'll stay at this altitude. We'll Gl just glad level, we're going to level off now at 1500. I'm glad I didn't wear my sandals. Sure, were at 2000. <laughs> Maribyrn traffic, trike 6340, helicopter in the vicinity. Uh, trike 6340 is tracking west at 2500 for Lenthal's Dam. Currently two miles to the west of the Maryborough field. Um, and if you remain at 2000, we should be clear. Yeah, I think four, yeah, yeah, copy that, I'll remain at 2000, thanks for that. Thanks, good day. Right, so we've got some traffic coming in from the south. And he's four miles, and we'll be at four miles about when he's passing through. If I see him on the, uh, if I see him out there, I'll point the camera in his direction. So we should stay fairly um, alert right now. He's going to Woodgate, and we're going to head up to Woodgate as well, but he'll be way ahead of us by then. Okay, so thermal conditions, we're at 2,500, it's pretty smooth, it's not too bad. It'll be a nice evening as it settles down, it's only going to improve now. Um, but you're not scared of my flying, are you? Back to the program? No, no. Flying's all good? Yes, I feel very safe. And this weather, but I'm not trying to big note myself. No, I'm just trying to say, like, this weather could be a little bit intimidating, couldn't it? 
Yes. Being so hot, being so thermal looking, and there's a few clouds around, but it's not. It's not that bad. There's a little one there we're going under now. But there's not that bigger or many thermals around. So, all in all, you haven't flown because we've just been busy. Just been busy. All right, well, that's the end of this program, I guess. I didn't uh, really get the answers I was hoping for. No, I didn't, oh, think, was. I didn't think there was going to be anything worrisome there. <laughs> um, anyway, I'll show you um, some of the interesting highlights of this flight. See you shortly. Is that Lincoln's dam ahead? Sorry? Is that Lentil's dam ahead? Okay, so ahead of us, as my wife has just pointed out, is Lentil's dam. We haven't seen the helicopter as yet. Not sure if we're going to now. Um, but yeah, Lentil's dam is just in front of us and we'll remain 2,500 because of the helicopter traffic. And we'll just pass overhead the dam and have a look at it. And I'll give you a look at it in a moment. Well, I can now, actually. There's not much else to say, is there? So there she is. Lentil's dam. As I said, it's gone through a bit of a dry patch for a while and they were putting water restrictions on in the area. Um, we've had a little bit of rain recently, but it's not enough to really make a huge difference. It's only sort of delayed uh, some of the water dropping in our water supply. So this is the actual water supply for the Wai Bay area here. Well, I guess the Fraser Coast, really. It's quite an interesting shaped dam. It's got a lot of what we would probably call tributaries, like a lot of those fingers. Obviously when it rains, there's water coming off the land through those into the into the actual reservoir area for storage. And of course those fingers or tributaries are called the catchment system, which is um, all across the land here. There's a lot of forest here too, um, which isn't really good if you have to do a forced landing. There's a few clearings around, you might notice. Um, we'd be trying to get to one of those if uh, anything should happen to my engine. Or we needed to sit down in a hurry for any reason. On the right hand side, you might have seen in previous videos of showing Lentil's Dam, is the actual dam wall and that runs out a river, I think that's the Burnett River, and that goes out to, um, where does it go to? Thunderbird? Pretty sure. That's not the Burrum River. No. Oh, this is the Burrum. Yeah, this is the Burrum. So this goes out to um, Woodgate. Burrum, yeah, Burrum Heads, which we'll be going to on the way back home, which is out to our right. We can't see in the camera at the moment. The Burnett River is further north. Yeah, the Burnett River is the one I was thinking of. That would be one, straight ahead up the That one there. contributes into the, the river in Bundaberg. Well, it's the river through Bundaberg, and that comes out through Bundaberg. And that was the one that flooded in 2000, and I think it was 11 and 13. But there was one year it was really uh, huge, and it took out a lot of, did a lot of damage in Bundaberg. So we're just going to do a right turn towards the north now. And we'll be tracking the river out to the fire if you have a look now to the 12 o'clock location. It's quite a large fire going on there, so we might just head up that direction. And we're actually on the way to a place called Woodgate, which is a seaside community, which is much favoured by tourists, and uh, has a nice wave beach there. And it's Woodgate's actually located, if you know your area here, between Tuggan, or between Harvey Bay, and Bundaberg. So that's not far from where that fire is. Of course, we won't be getting too close to the fire. There's not too much point in doing that. But just to the right, sorry, to the left, you can see the stream of smoke. That's a really good indicator of which direction this, the uh, wind is coming from, isn't it? And it looks like the wind is from the northeast, which is more or less the direction we took off in. Anyway, uh, when we get close to the fire, I will uh, give you a closer look at it. We'll see you there when we get there. Okay, so we've just had the helicopter on the uh, radio again. We've just missed that call on the camera, but it is on the phone. I'll let you listen to it uh, shortly. Um, he's actually a heli tanker, and he's taking water, or he'll be going in to fight this fire that we're heading to. 
So that means that we will stay clear of the area to allow him to do the work as we would be required to do by our regulations and laws here. Um, he'll be passing through this position shortly. He's just south of Howard. Howard is just at a one o'clock position here on the right. Um, we're at 2,500. He's tracking at 1,500. So, uh, no, everything's good. Um, as I said, we, we, we probably see the helicopter now. There's a good chance of that. And we'll just remain clear of the fire, which is just ahead there. So that was a little bit of unexpected uh, spectacle, I suppose. How are you enjoying the flight so far, Raylene? Very, very nice. Is it more than you expected today? It is for me. It is for you. Well, I didn't expect to see a fire. I know. With a helicopter coming in. Oh, look. Well, your Christmas has come at once, eh? Well, the helicopter must be, uh, it must be a decent fire and it must be um, quite important to put it out or take it under control. Maybe there is some housing uh, involved to well, some degree. Well, it does look quite intense. It does, and we'll uh, show you that as we get a little bit closer, but like I said, I won't be going in too close. Now, let's just have a look. While we were, uh, while we're looking at this uh, fire, I'll just let you hear the helicopter call that I received a short time ago. Okay, here's the helicopter call now. And yeah, uh, like I can see, and he's coming to the south of the, uh, of Howard, uh, uh, the helitex 416. Currently about, um, uh, five miles south of Howard this time, on a 1,500, taking for a Woodgate fire. Uh, all that extent, and now we're Well, if I complained of being tired before, I'm not tired now. Yeah. This is waking me up. You had to see the helicopter over the water now. Just over the river there in the middle of the river in front of us. Lower. He's uh, 1,500. He's probably 1,000 now. We're at 2,500. Do you think he'll have water on him or do you think he'll go? No, he'll get water as he gets in. He'll get closer. He'll yeah. go to that dam that's close over there. Probably. So if you haven't watched my last couple of videos, I had a helicopter in those too. And that was a police helicopter in Victoria. You should go back and watch those. I'll put the link at the top now. So I don't know what the chances are of me uh, filming another helicopter in the near future. I'll give you a clue. Pretty much 99.9%. .9 I know something you guys don't. Hopefully I can pull it off. You're in for a big surprise. Do you know what it is, Raylene? I can guess, but I can't say. Yeah, go on. What is it? What do you reckon it is? I reckon it's going to do that, whatever, what's his name? That Apache helicopter thing. Apache? Oh, whatever yeah, it's Yeah, I wish. <laughs> that, big, that big helicopter thing. Uh, what war did it fight in? World War One. No. Two? Two? You've got no idea, have you? No. Uh, okay, well, look, I guess, viewers, you've got <laughs> no chance of finding out from my wife. <laughs> But you will enjoy it, I can promise you. I thought I was going to have to beef out what she said then, but no, I don't. No worries at all. Oh, the you mean The that? secret is safe with me. <laughs> you don't know. No. You probably haven't told me, that's why. Oh, I think I did. Did you? I think it's got a few different names, actually. Oh. Oh, yeah, I do know now. No, you don't. I do, You're sorry. probably going to say R44, R22, no. Bell Jet Ranger. <laughs> Augusta 139. It starts with the letter A. A? No. No, we've done that, Apache. <laughs> There's the fire, you can see there. We've got 30, uh, 26 litres, we've got one and a half hours remaining, we have a time of Zulu uh, 7, we've got one hour of light, so we're good, so we're uh, flight time so far 31 minutes total since engine start, so we are good to get home, but we do have a headwind, we'll be heading back coastal, this in front of us is a fire obviously, you can see the flames, so I think you should be able to see them on camera, the helicopter is there somewhere, he's probably assessing the position, and um, Oh no, it's on camera, don't you worry. And uh, I can turn it though if you want to see a better look. There you go. Yeah. And um, you can see the flames and everything. 
the helicopter will be assessing. Oh, I can see the helicopter there. It's just to the north of the fire, which is to the right of the smoke upwind. Oh, yeah. He's turning left. Yeah, he's probably going in to have a look, and he's going to pick up some water, and then he's going to start bombing. He might even be dropping off some fire crew. I don't know. There should already be fire crew there. All right, so we're going to turn here. Now I am still one to two miles south of the fire, I am clear of the zone and I am now heading in for, I can see the helicopter in the smoke there, I'm now turning right to head away from the fire, so I have he's not He's going had, lower. Yeah, he is. He's going to dump. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but he's in there now. Yeah, he's down, down. He's on the ground. Yeah. Oh, he's really low, he's coming this way. in the shadows and that's always bad for me right anyway back to the program in front of us here we have Woodgate the town of Woodgate which is located just to the east of a fire as it turns out hopefully the fire doesn't swing around and head this way because there's a little bit of an estate area just there uh, the fire is on this side of that river the river you can see there going out the heads there or the on the beach um, so it, it could make it oh there's a couple of creeks there it may not be able to jump that but the smoke is blowing the wrong way for the fire be heading this way, as I said, as long as it doesn't uh, change direction overnight, which which can happen. Right, we're going to start a descent now. Just to back off some power here. Use my foot pedal, and we're going to just descend over Woodgate. We're halfway along the stretch of residential zone. Make sure we've got no aircraft because there could be more. We will listen to the radio and monitor that because there could be more aircraft heading into the area. And it's interesting, he was still on 12655 up here. But I suppose we're still in the CTAF 10 mile zoom. It's a bit warmer down here. Yeah, it will be. We'll go down to 1000. Here we go, Mark. Cavalry 404. Join that zone when we're on way 12. Here we go. Anyway, for, you, for those of you wanting to see Woodgate, the camera's on the wrong side, but here's the southern or the eastern end of Woodgate, just there. We're at 1,000 now. We will commence to level out. It's not too bumpy. It's grown quite a bit. We'll just remain beach, coastal, over water. Actually, we'll remain over beach, over trees, so we can see the coastalness of it all. Under the view of the fire into the sun, uh, we're currently at Burham Heads, we'll show you that in a second. We just rounded the big, uh, what is it called, the Woodgate River Point Heads or whatever, on the northern side of the Burham River, which is the river, this is the river now that comes from that Lake Lenthal Dam that we saw earlier. This is the outflow from the dam. Well, I wouldn't call it outflow, it is tidal, so I guess it goes up and down, but the water from the dam does come out here, especially when it's in flood, and it turns this river to a chocolate brown. All right, so that's Burham Heads before us. Let's have a look up the river just quickly. Let's have a look at the turbulence here, a little bump. Did you get a fight then? Yeah, I did. <laughs> it's just a sudden jolt, wasn't it? Yeah. It might have been a bit of a thermal. Right, there's the river into the sunset. Doesn't that look spectacular? There's another bump. Right, we're going to turn around over Burham Heads. There's a sunken boat there. It's a power, a good power. Yeah, sunken boat below. There you go. Yeah. Alright, boat ramp, car park, all that. Burham Heads. Special place for people to come on holiday. I thought your hands had slipped off the, the bra. Nope. Wouldn't do that. Sort of felt like it. Tesla 172 dollar micro pass. Here's one to arrive to the southeast inbound. I'll be sent through 4000. East next second time. One. China. Terrible. Anyway, before us now is the town of Tudor. Below us is a private airstrip. One day I will seek permission to land here and have a beverage with the owner. 
boop, I do not know. <coughs> so what's the point? It's actually an island, so you can't get here by car. You have to cross it by boat. Or land by plane. Or an helicopter. And there's a barge now, and a helicopter pad. How's that? And Tugum is just in front there. Hopefully no one's flying your drone at 1,000 feet, because I will not be happy. It is illegal to fly about 400 feet with a drone without permission and, I don't know, what's it called? Special approval from the CASA, the Civil Aviation Safety Authority of Australia. So if you're watching this video, you fly drones, and there's a little tip for you. There are fines, of course, and you wouldn't want to hit me in the face with your drone, would you? And you wouldn't want to lose your drone, would you, through my propeller, would you? And I'm not having a rant much. I fly drones for a living, did you know that? And because I do, I know the rules. I'm a commercial operator, as well as a recreational pilot. Another little piece of information you didn't want to know. This video is full of information today, my wife, my friend in the back seat. So we're just tootling along here. That's an English thing, isn't it, to say? Tootling along down the uh, esplanade of Tugum to the south now, to the east, I should say. But more or less heading to the south, southern coastal direction. Meribar traffic, track 6340, turn space, runway 35, full stop, Meribar. Enjoyed a pleasant flight. 